Whoa, three, two, one. Hi, Internet friends. This is Magic Brad with uh, the Magic Brad Show. And I've got Lori Herbers on here. Are you there, Lori? Yes, I am. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so what part of the world are you in? Did you say Kansas? Yes, I'm in Kansas right now. Isn't that where that Wizard of Oz person is? Oh, yeah, but I got rid of her. <laughs> you got rid of her? You broomed her? I got rid of her. I gave her red slippers and sent her somewhere else. <laughs> she wasn't doing her job? Nope. <laughs> off, off you go. Off to Oz. So you are an author and a coach, and your book, let me see if I get this right, the book is called Second Chances. How I Turned Hate into Love and Found Your Purpose. Yep, yes, that yes. is it. <laughs> Very cool. I think that's almost like being a magician, changing love into hate. It's like an alchemist. Yeah, actually someone just told me about that book today and I'm like, well, that's kind of like mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the alchemist? Yeah, except for they were looking for the purpose and I was just trying to find love, so. There you go, yeah. and you found both. <laughs> and I found my purpose. Yeah, because when you find love, you find your purpose, uh, interestingly enough. Yeah. So how long have you lived in Kansas? Um, well, we've been here for a year. We were in Oklahoma for five years. And then before that, I was in Kansas for like 15 years. And before that, I was in Wisconsin. So <laughs> you get around, but you're staying in the Midwest, huh? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> right in the edge. Midwest is a different kind of breed of people, I think, because they don't like to make decisions. Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah, because you go out to the East Coast, New York, they tell you like it is, this is how it's going to be. Uh -huh. You go out to the West Coast, they tell you how it is, but that's not really how it's going to be. <laughs> Midwest, they yeah. just don't make a decision. <laughs> yeah, leave it up to everybody else. And, maybe, yeah. that's, maybe that's just up here in Minnesota, the non-decision yeah. makers. I don't know. Never really thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, my brain does that stuff. I get lost. I got what I call entrepreneurial ADD. I'm always thinking about different things. That's funny. I am too, but it's usually not about what other people are thinking. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So you're a, a coach also, empowerment coach? An empowerment coach. Yeah, I could say life coach, but I feel like I'm more into empowering people, helping them. Um, find love for themselves, doing self-care, even finding their purpose, getting through struggles, um, just helping lift them up and understand that they are amazing, they're worthy, their life is beautiful. It, it makes sense to change the gears sometimes because, you know, life coach, everybody's a life coach and it just, uh, there didn't used to be that many, but since the internet came along, everybody wants to help everybody and whether they're certified as coaches or not or qualified, yeah. like my wife is a shaman used to teach Spanish at the University of Minnesota. So she's a teacher and now mm -hmm. she's coaching people more on like uh, spiritual growth and dream work and all that kind of stuff. We so, need to chat. <laughs> we are. Oh, you Well, no, with right. her. No, I'm like, I need to talk with her. Yeah, because I have education is my background. That's what my degree's in, is education. Well, that so. makes for a good coach because, uh, and also their students. Teachers are students. They're always learning. And my wife yes, gobbles down books constantly, constantly learning yep. stuff so she can teach new stuff. And I'm, a, I'm an advocate of coaches because I'm self-employed and entrepreneurial and kind of stubborn. Sometimes I don't use coaches, but I totally get it because what a person has to do is get out of their own way and let a coach mm -hmm. kind of look in from the from remote and kind of say, have you ever thought about looking at this way? <laughs> yeah, so and um, yeah, and, and that's been one of my skills that I didn't even actually even use when I was younger, but I have like this, this sense of knowing so I can know something about you that I shouldn't know. <laughs> that blows people's minds sometimes because they're like, how can you know that? <laughs> Uh, I, to I, I totally know. get what yeah. you're talking about. Some people look at it like they almost look like woo-woo stuff. That's kind of mm -hmm. weird. Like you're some kind of psychic or a better word for it now is intuitive mm -hmm. or just kind of paying attention because I've got that similar kind of situation. I'm no way a coach because I can't teach. I don't have the patience for it, but <laughs> I definitely see certain things in certain people. And to me, it's like, um, that's a no-brainer. Why don't you do that? And part of the reason they don't do it is because they're not there. Right. But the person like yourself from the outside being able to see that saying, no, you are there. You just have to have the courage to do it. So that's 
your maybe your empowerment element? Yes, exactly. Yeah, because sometimes that fear gets in the way. And so once they realize why, you know, sometimes it's just a matter of go, okay, so why are you afraid? Because sometimes the fear over here, like say, like writing my book, I had to ask myself why it, the fear was smaller to not write it and say I failed than the fear of writing it and then failing. So I had to go, oh, well, I don't want to do that. I'm just going to write it then. <laughs> so fear is that acronym, right? Yeah. False evidence appearing real, so they say. But yep. Sometimes, like <laughs> the, the word fear, it sounds like there's a big monster and you're afraid for your life, but sometimes it's very subtle fear and it's just enough to prevent you from taking action on something and you end up procrastinating or avoiding it and doing something else. And mm -hmm. I guess sometimes it's probably nice to have a coach as an accountability buddy to kind of say, yep. hey, maybe you should, if it ain't going to hurt, just go try it. <laughs> yeah. What's it, yeah. And sometimes that is, you just say, okay, what's the worst going to happen if you do it? Because sometimes if you list it out, it's not even that bad. And you're like, well, all right. <laughs> there is I'll always uh, <laughs> sayings too, like uh, don't sweat the small stuff because it's all small stuff. Because uh, right? yeah. if, uh, if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. <laughs> so yeah, and I, kind of stuff. the thing that, I, that really hit me one day was driving at night when it's dark and I thought I saw something because of the shadow of something and it looked really big. And then as you get up there, there's like nothing even there. So in essence, sometimes we make things appear really big, but then when you actually get up there, you're like, well, that's not, it's a little bitty bug. <laughs> Just look giant the way the, you know, the dark was hitting it. So. Sure. I've, I've seen pictures like that where like in the cartoons when I was a kid and there's a little, little cockroach walking in the shadow. It makes it look like yes. a big giant monster or whatever. <laughs> yep. I know what that is. Yeah. Well, totally get it. And uh, yeah. that can happen too. I mean, um, I remember as a child walking home late at night and in the dark, I'm scared and you wonder is someone behind that bush and you start to get that, but there's mm -hmm. nothing there, but the fear is yep. still there. So it feels real, but it's not real. Yeah. And then when you focus on it, then of course it gets bigger because what you feed gets bigger. And sometimes right. if you just stop feeding the fear, it kind of goes away. So what got you into, what, what made you decide you wanted to be a coach and help people? The funny thing is I, I've been doing it my whole life. Like whenever my friends were struggling or they just wanted someone to lift them back up and to, to read, you know, say, you're awesome. I was always that go-to person. And even like the first time I ever stepped foot in a school, because I actually started as a para educator before I got my degree and all the kids that had trauma or struggling at home, or behavior issues would just attract it to me. I don't know if it's just like I make people feel safe and they can be open with me. I just have always done it. And I think, you know, part of the, the my whole story of finding love, you know, from hate to love, because I, um, I was emotionally abused growing up. And so I didn't understand my skills because I always just told myself, well, who am I to help mm -hmm. anybody? But actually I've gone through so much stuff. <laughs> then why the heck couldn't I help anybody else that's going through all of this? So. Yeah, I just started going, you know, what? It was, it actually, it's a funny story because I, I, did, I did like a program and like two days after I started this, they were like, oh, we're looking for coaches. And I was like, I want to do that. How do you do that? And then I got an email. It was like weird. It was like somebody was listening into me and I got an email the next day to join a coach, you know, become a coach. And I was like, oh, and so then I, <laughs> I joined. It was so weird. Like I was so meant to do it. And now it's to the point where. Um, if anyone's listening to this and like, I don't know what my purpose is. Here's the best way to figure out your purpose. Like if you, if someone came and told you, you can't do that and it makes you feel internally pained, you're meant to do it. So if someone tells you you cannot, they're going to take it away from you. And that's when I knew I'm like, I need to help other people. I don't want people to spend another day feeling worthless, lost, like they have no direction or it's too late. Cause I lived like that for so long and it's not a way to live. Well, I think that um, those things, when the, the chemistry is right or the vibration is right, that's when that stuff shows up. That's when mm -hmm. obviously you got, to, got the calling to do what you do. Yep. And it was as obvious as heck. And there might have been that little <laughs> hesitance of who am I to be a, to yeah. be a coach. But um, yeah. the reality is if you know one thing more than somebody else, just a little niche, you're the expert. Yeah. That's all it takes. Is just one little pivot could change someone's life drastically. Yeah. And, and, and it's crazy because I like, I can't even be on a phone. Cause somebody asked me today, just today, cause I was doing a bunch of calls and they're like, do you have to be like in person when you do and like more of an energy thing? And I'm like, no, <laughs> I don't. Like I, 
before I even get on a call, I, I imagine the energy around them and I can already tell stuff about it before I even get them on the phone or I can even be talking to them and be like, okay, I feel like there's something traumatic that happened that you're not letting go of. And they're like, what? what? And then they start listing all the things and I'm like, well, there it is. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, an area that some people look at that as like, that's all woo-woo, wacko, crazy mm -hmm. stuff. And But the, the reality is, is there's been situations I think everybody's had them when they get in a room, they just don't like somebody or you get in a room and you just like somebody. You don't know yep. why you can't explain why. And again, it's not about the communication or the words. It's about the mm -hmm. feeling of mm -hmm. how something is. So you can definitely yeah. vibe with that just with the, the, the circumstances and how it feels. Totally get it. Totally get it. Right. Yeah. And a lot of people that say, I don't, I'm not into the woo woo, but you're actually doing it every single day. <laughs> Because your body actually is frequent. It has frequency running through it. It's actually, mm -hmm. your cells vibrate. You are energy. Yep, and the, the analogy, or not even analogy, but scientifically, if you take two mm -hmm. tuning forks and you just you hit one of them and you just touch them together, the other one will acquire that vibration. Mm -hmm. it's, it just comes it's, to a natural harmony. It's actually in a leadership course I took when I was working on my master's, and I can't remember it. I want to say it was the power of three or something like that. So the energy of the two people when they come together actually makes a third person. Yep. So depending on what kind of energy you're bringing, you know, so if you're really negative and they're negative, then you got like a triple negative. So exactly. You get two or more agree and then you yep. creates that third entity of uh, could be good, could be bad. Yeah, we're hoping good. Yep. It's, it's, well, it's always about <laughs> perception. Um, being a magician, that's what I got started me in the whole event world. Yeah, and business cool. in general was the magic and it's all about perception you know when the lady gets cut in half she doesn't really get cut in half but it looks like she gets cut in half so it's all perception <laughs> yeah yeah you know, there's more it, out there that we don't know yeah so yeah there's the things you know things you don't know and the things you didn't know you didn't know exactly <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing that people have to tap into i mean we can get into our emotional state and our logical state and then that that's all we do is we think about the things that we you know, the, the past that we've had and maybe mm -hmm. the future that we want, but there's something else that you can always tap into to give you that, that path. Yep. So what inspired you to write a book? Well, that's when I get into some more woo woo. <laughs> like it's been years. I've been, I kept hearing being told I need to write a book called second chances. I need to write a book called second chances. And I kept going, eh. and then Finally, I was like, you know what? This, my story is going to help other people. And so I'm very open. I'm very vulnerable in that story of my life and how, you know, I, you tend to get stuck. Like if someone's negative to you when you're very little, then you start to, the, you hear those words and then those be, words become your words and then pretty soon you just believe it. And so it was my battle of, you know, basically hating myself and learning to accept everything that I am. And so who the heck cannot, you know, that not get something from that? Because we all have moments where we're like, oh, why did I do that? Or, you know, we have guilt or shame. We don't need to carry all of that. So. Well, they say that uh, people kind of are, their personalities develop between conception and about 10 years old. It makes sense that you got all this mm -hmm. stuff when you're a little kid and mom says no, mom says no, mom says no. And pretty soon that's what you learn is no. Mm -hmm. And then you can't uh, can't get out of it. You have to actually work at getting out of it because it's embedded in your. I went through yes. a lot of that stuff. I didn't didn't even realize it, but as a kid, I had some abandonment issues because mom and dad would take off to the bar, and I would be yeah. home. But it's no big deal to me. But it is to a little kid, yeah. even yeah. though they don't think it is. And as you're older, it's like ah, that's no big deal. But what yes. what happened was um, I was doing some work with a breathwork guy, and. We were talking about the, you know, how I'm not enough and all this. And I was going through all these issues. And when I came out of this whole breathwork session, I was just craving chocolate really, really bad. And uh, particularly a nut goodie, candy bar, you know, the round ones with all the nuts mm -hmm. and stuff. In it. So I had to stop at a gas station and get one. And I got one and I got actually a big, big package of them. And I ate about four of them by the time I got home. <laughs> it was crazy. And then looking back on multiple sessions, the reason was because that was my reward when mom and dad would go out, they'd uh -huh. bring me a candy bar back. That was my reward. So there was that basically traumatic, yeah. you know, when you're mm -hmm. young and you're, I don't know, how old the hell old it was, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, something like that. Yeah, and, so, six, and then it gets stuck, yeah. 
those are the things that someone like yourself, if you can work with you and people can communicate and you can kind of see that or sense that and you can play that back to them because yeah. if they're trying to do it on their own, I don't care if they're reading self-help books or listening to self-help tapes and going through affirmations, that's your self-talk talking to yourself. And until you mm -hmm. get out of that space of you and yourself into that third entity, which might be yourself, you mm -hmm. as a coach helping that person, they can't see it until there's someone else to shine that light on. Yeah. And sometimes they've got it shoved so down in there. They don't even know it's there, but they just know something, something's not working something, you know, and, and sometimes when it is something traumatic, you tend to block it out and you, and, and you need that other person to kind of help get you over that because it's painful. And, you, and it's like, you're, it's almost like your body is like, okay, this is going to hurt. So I'm just not going to let you release it. And so you need that person to kind of help give you that safety net to kind of pull it out and get it, get you through. Yeah, that's it. that uh, yeah. denial thing. I never, it's hard to get out of that when someone says you're in denial and you say, no, mm -hmm. I'm not. <laughs> Cause that, Denial. No. <laughs> yeah. There. yeah. So do you have Just a like copy we, of your book with you right now? I do not. I am supposed to have one, one coming as I literally, it literally just went up on Monday. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not off the digital press. <laughs> it really is. I'm it's excited. It's on Amazon. It's on Amazon. It's on a lot of things. It's um, Barnes and Noble. Cause you can do like the ebook or you can get the actual book off Amazon or the Kindle version. Like I tried to get as many versions as I could to get it out there. So yeah. yeah. Very cool. So then uh, before we go, can you share how, like how do people get a hold of you and do you, do you do like, um, like introductory sessions? Cause so, sometimes people don't want to just to invest in the situation. They want to kind of right. test the water. So you got like a little, yeah, I do discovery, yeah, free discovery call. So yeah. just because you want to make sure that, you know, I make you feel safe and that I feel like I can help you because if you call me and you really don't want the help, then, you know, it doesn't do me any good to try to help someone who's not ready to actually do the work. Cause sometimes it is work that you have to sort through. Um, but yeah, I do free discovery calls. Um, I have, my website is soullovelegacy.com. Just and those I'm three also, words, really easy breezy. Soul, yep. love. Legacy. Cool. I also have a Facebook page, same name, So Love Legacy. Everything's So Love Legacy. So <laughs> makes it easier that way. All right. Well, before we go, do you have any words of wisdom that you can share with anybody before we sign My off? words of wisdom. Um, I think my favorite saying is do not let someone else's words become your truth. So I think you I define think, you define who you are, not someone else. I think that's a good one. Perfecto. <laughs> well, Lori, I appreciate you taking the time and I will get this thing beamed up there and then I'll send it off to you. And uh, if you could share it and I share it, yep. and put it out there to the world with keywords and hashtags and all that stuff and make the world a better place. Yay. <laughs> I appreciate you taking the time, Lori. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. See ya. Peace. Bye.